Hello, this is Math Models, the notes for uh, Lesson 5-5. We're going to talk about solving systems using elimination. We have several steps. Uh, mostly steps are rather small. Don't let them uh, get you worried that this is so much work. It's a bit of work, but these steps are not nearly as big as you may think they are. Uh, first thing is that both equations must be in standard form. That is, that they must be at AX plus BY equals C, being that we have X first and then Y and then equals and then C. Next we're going to need to multiply each equation by some number in order to cancel out either X or Y. Then we'll cancel them. Once we've done that we can solve for a variable. We're going to solve for the one we didn't cancel. Then we're going to plug what we got into our equation and solve for the other variable. Last, we're going to put our answer into an ordered pair. So let's go ahead and talk about number one. First thing is, are these in standard form? Yes, they are. We've got x, then y, then a number. x, then y, then a number. Excellent. Now, in order to cancel, I need either my x's to match or my y's to match. Well, this is 1x and 2x. Those are not the same. This is negative 1y and positive y. Well, it's still 1 and 1, so these actually already match. It means we don't need to do anything. Now we'll do our canceling. Now, I have a negative y plus y. If I want to make those get rid of, I'm going to need to add them. So let's see what we get. We get x plus 2x makes 3x. Negative y plus y means plus 0. Equals 2 plus 13 is 15. Well, the plus 0 does not matter, which means I've got 3x equals 15. Well, if I divide both sides by 3, I get that x equals uh, not 15. 15 divided by 3 is 5. When we know that x equals 5, we're going to plug that back into one of our equations. So 5 minus y equals 2. If I subtract 5 from both sides, I get that negative y equals negative 3, which means that positive y equals positive 3. So I've got my ordered pair. It goes x first, then y. So 5, 3. And we're done. So solving by elimination sometimes is not very hard at all. These were already ready to be solved for. Let's go ahead and look at problem number 2. Well, are they in standard form? x, y, number x, y equals number. Yes, they are. Now we need to get them to match. We have 2x and 3x. We have negative y and we have 4y. Well, nothing matches. Well, I need to multiply to get something to match. Well, I know that I can multiply this top equation by 4 because 4 times y will give me 4y. So let's go ahead and do this. 4 times 2 makes 8x. 4 times the negative y makes minus 4y. Equals, and then I need to do 17 times 4. And we get that, that equals 68. Now that we've got this, we need to go ahead and eliminate. My y's are the same, and positive and negative, if I add them, they'll go away. 3 plus 8 is 8, 9, 10, 11 x. 4 y plus negative 4 y makes 0 equals, now negative 13 plus 68 is 15, 5. The plus 0 does not matter. So we have 11x equals 55. 
divide both sides by 11, and then I get that x equals 5. And you take this and plug it into one of my two equations. So 2 times 5 minus y equals 17, which is 10 minus y is 17. If I subtract 10, I get that negative y equals a positive 7, which means that positive y equals negative 7. So I solved x was 5, y was negative 7, and I have my answer. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at example number 3. Now, first off, I need to see if they are in standard form. We've got x y equals a number, x, y equals a number. Yes, they're in standard form. Next, I see if anything matches. Well, 2 and 3, they don't match. 3 and 4, they don't match. Now, nothing times 2 will give me 3, and nothing times 3 will give me 4. So I'm going to need to multiply both of my equations. And because I'm going to multiply them both, I'm going to go ahead and just choose to eliminate my x's this time. Well, I've got 2x up there, which means I'm going to multiply the bottom by 2. I've got 3x here, means I'm going to multiply the top by 3. What this does is this is going to make my x's match. So 3 times 2 makes 6x minus 3 times 3 is 9y equals 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Time for the second one. 2 times 3 makes 6x. 2 times 4 makes 8y. 2 times 3 makes 24. Uh, sorry, 2 times 3 is 6. For some reason I was thinking 3 times 8. So 2 times 3 is 6, and it is also a negative. Now notice that our x's match. Well, this time, 6x and 6x, I can't add them and make them go away, so I'm going to have to subtract. So to subtract, I'm going to simply switch all my signs in the bottom. Minus, plus, plus. In essence, I didn't multiply by 2, I multiplied by negative 2. So that now when I add, 6 minus 6 is 0. Negative 9 plus positive 8 is a negative 1y. Negative 3 plus positive 6 is 3. Well, if I divide both sides by negative 1, I get that y equals negative 3. Plug that back into one of my equations. So we have 2x. Minus 3 times negative 3 equals negative 1. So 2x plus 9 equals negative 1. We subtract 9 from both sides. We get that 2x equals negative 10. And when we divide both sides by 2, we get that x equals negative 5. Make sure that when you're putting your solution, the x number always goes first and y always goes second. So you may notice that I'm going fairly quickly through the basic algebra steps. These are steps that you should already know and be well uh, aware of. If not, then you are going to want to pause the video and practice as I work out these next two. So let's go ahead and look at number four. Now looking at these, these are not in standard form. I need them to be x, y number. These are y, x number. So I'm going to need to rearrange these to be negative 2x plus y equals negative 5 and negative x plus y equals negative 3. All I did was I
swapped these two. So now it is x, y, and number for both of these. Well, I'm looking and I see, hey, those are the same. Well, I can't add because y plus y makes 2y. I don't want that. So I have to subtract, which means I'm going to flip all of my signs. In essence, I took this equation and I multiplied it by negative 1. And so now I'm going to add negative 2 plus 1 is a negative 1x. y plus negative y makes 0. Negative 5 plus 3 makes negative 2. The 0 does not matter, so I have that negative x equals negative 2, which means that positive x equals positive 2. Now that I have what x is, I'm going to plug it back into one of my equations. This time, I'm going to use the second one because it has slightly smaller numbers. So, y minus 2 equals negative 3. Well, if I add 2 to both sides, I get that y equals negative 1. So, y equals negative 1, x equals 2. My answer is 2, <coughs> negative 1. And now for our last problem. Again, if you are not doing well with the algebra, you may want to practice some of this on your own. But this is actually a special case. So let's see where this gets us. <coughs> well, I have x, y, and I'm going to postpone this restart. I have x and y and a number x, y, and a number. And what we're going to do is we need to make them match. Well, they don't match. Since I can't multiply anything by 2 to get 3, I'm just going to go ahead and multiply both equations. This 2 goes down there. That 3 goes there. And so 3 times 2 make 6x minus 6y equals 3 times 8 is 24. 2 times 3 makes 6x minus 2 times 3 is 6y equals 2 times 5 is 10. Now I need to make the signs different because these are both minus so I need to change my sign. I'm going to go ahead and flip all the ones up top. So minus, plus, and minus. And let's see what we get. Well, negative 6 plus 6 is 0. Uh, 6 minus 6 is 0. And negative 24 plus 10 is the same as 24 minus 10, which is negative 14. So I get that 0 equals negative 14. Well, that is a false statement. My variables have completely disappeared. There is no more x. There is no more y. When they've both canceled, it just doesn't work. And so this is no solution. And that's because there is false. Now, should I have gotten a true statement? Like if I got that 0 equals 0? Okay. Had I gotten 0 equals 0? then it would have been infinitely many solutions. Okay, So this one is in fact no solution. But I wanted to make sure that you were aware that if you do get it to be true, you'll have infinitely many solutions. Which I've just answered this last question. When solving by elimination, when do you get infinitely many solutions? When both x and y cancel and a false statement remains. So when both x and y cancel and the false statement remains, then you get, oh sorry, this says infinitely many 
So it's not false. It is true. Okay. So no solutions is a false statement. Infinitely many is a true statement. Good luck on your assignment. Hope you have a good day.